So the Radon physics state is when a player has no control over the physics of their character and it can create realistic movement and interactions and I'm basically just going to show how to make a simple system for that. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page for exclusive content, like places from my videos, and even the space that you are seeing on this screen right now. So overall, Rattle can kind of count as procedural animation on Roblox, where the player just flops to the ground and their body is entirely moved by physics. Normally, if I just do a playtest, you can see that if my character dies, it's basically just going to fall into pieces. Like this. So we need to somehow connect these pieces together and the easiest one would be to use basically constraints where the best suit for that is going to exactly be the ball socket constraint because it's a constraint that allows you to like the name says connect something with a ball socket and it's going to be freely moving on the sphere surface so let's just start off by adding a script into the server script service and this script is going to be called a ragdoll now there is going to be a few different ways of actually doing this effect. One can be that whenever the player dies, it's going to create those sockets. But you can also create them when the player basically just appears, when their appearance gets loaded, and then enable those sockets when the player dies. But no matter what, we are going to need the player service and two different functions. One is going to be on character loaded, which gets the character which is a model, and another one is going to be the on player added which has the player that is the player instance. And then we need to connect the onPlayerAdded to the player service that player added event by using the connect method and then providing the onPlayerAdded function. Then whenever the player gets added, we can do player that character appearance loaded and then connect another function which is going to be the on character loaded. And now this on character loaded function, this function is going to create these constraints between the body parts of the character. So I'm just going to create a folder which is just going to hold all of the constraints and it's going to be parented under the player's character and the name of the folder is going to be also constraints now I'm just going to do a quick playtest again because we need to somehow determine that the ball socket constraints need to be basically connected in the right hierarchy for example between the lower torso and the normal torso and then from the torso to the shoulder and then from the shoulder to the upper arm and then to the hand but our character kind of already has that but instead of constraints, it's going to be the motor 6Ds. For example, if I take the lower left arm, it's going to have the left elbow motor 6D instance right here. And this left elbow, to be exact, is positioned somewhere between the shoulder and the lower left arm. So we basically just need to loop through the descendants of the character and just get these motors with code. So you can do a for loop, index then the motor, in pairs then character and then get descendants do, And right now it's going to get all of the descendants of the character, so we need to check if the motor is actually a motor. So I can do if not a motor is a motor, 6D, then we just want to continue and end. Else if this instance is going to be a motor, we want to create the bolt socket constraint in its place. So I can do local bolt socket is equal to an instance that new, and then the ball socket constraint. Then I am immediately just going to place it under the folder that's holding all the constraints. So I'm going to do that parent is going to be the folder that we created above. Then the name is going to be basically just ball and then underscore and followed by the name of the motor like this. So again, I'm just going to do a playtest for representation. If I just go into the workspace and the player, I'm going to have the constraints folder right here. And now it's going to have all of the ball socket constraints parented under that folder. And you can see that we have the left ankle, the left hip, the neck, the right wrist, even the root and the waist. And if I reset my character, it's not really going to do anything yet. And that's because the motor 6D uses C0 and C1 positions, but we need to connect the ball sockets with attachments. So I need to actually create these attachments. So attachment 0 is going to be an instance that new again and an attachment. Then the parent is going to be the motor that part 0. Then we set the name to basically just whatever you want. I'm going to set it to be 0. And then we need to change the C frame to be the C0 of the motor by doing motor that C0. And then we want to repeat this process, but instead of doing 0, we just want to change everything to 1. Like so. So now if I for example just go to the right hand, it's going to have the B1 attachment right here. And it's positioned exactly where the motor 6D is positioned relative to the body part. 
T0 stands for, I think, C frame 0, that's related to the part 0 right here, which is the right lower arm. And C1 is the same for the part 1. So now that we have these attachments, we need to assign them to the bolt socket. By doing bolt socket then attachment 0, which is going to be the created attachment, and same for the attachment 1. So if I go to one of the constraints right here, you can see that they are positioned basically well correctly. And even if I reset my character, it's going to already have the ragdoll physics. But there is few different things that we can do, just to make the system more universal. And the main thing is to have the ball socket basically disabled at the start right here. Because it's going to be easier to have an option to disable and enable the ragdoll even when the player is alive. And another thing that we need to change are going to be the settings of the ball socket. If I just create an instance under the script, you can see that we have different properties like the limits enabled, as well as the twist limits enabled as well. And here we just need to change some values, as well as enable these two properties. So I'm just going to do ball socket that limits enabled and set it to true. As well as the twist limits enabled as well, and then we can just change some settings like the upper angle that we can set to for example 45, then twist lower angle that we can set to minus 90, then the twist upper angle that we can set to 92, and the max friction torque that we can set to maybe 5. I'm also going to show an addition later for having different settings on different body parts. For example, if you don't want to make the head basically rotate, the same as for example an arm wood. And I just realized that I should probably just zoom this a little bit in, so we can see it a little bit better. And to present how this works with the settings, I'm just going to comment out this line and reset my character. Okay, but now to have an option to enable and disable the ragdoll, we can for example just make another function, which is going to be called setRagdoll. And then this is going to take the character of the player, which is going to be a model, and then a boolean with a boolean data type. So we previously created the constraints folder and in this function we can basically just look for it. So you do constraints folder and then the character find fish child constraints and then if the folder doesn't exist then we want to return end. And then we basically just want to look through it. So you do through index then then constraint in pairs constraints folder do or rather constraints folder get children do and then we want to check if the constraint is a bulk socket constraint then we want to do constraint that enabled and that's set to the boolean value that we pass as an argument in this function. And then there is also another thing that we need to check and it's going to be the humanoid of our character. So you do humanoid find fish child of class, then humanoid, and then you can do if not humanoid then return end. And then we want to do humanoid requires neck. This property is basically just what this box says, which allows developers to disable the behavior where the player's character dies if the neck motor 6D is removed or disconnected even remotely. So if you do a playtest and then use the move tool for example and move the player's head, it will basically just die because of this property. So for the ragdoll state, if the player is in the ragdoll, we want to set this property to not boolean. And that's because if the ragdoll is going to be true, then we want this property to be false, and just vice versa. So from the on character loaded, I'm just going to do task wait, then for example like 6 seconds, and then I'm going to set the ragdoll state of the character to be true. And now if I do a playtest, and then just wait a little bit, nothing is really going to happen and that's because I also forgot to change a different thing. Because even if the ball sockets are enabled, the Motor 6D instances of the character are still going to be working. So for example, what I can do is also change the motor to be parented under the folder that we made right here. So right at the end I can do motor.parent set to the folder. And then in this loop in the setRagdoll function, I can basically just do an else. So basically if this instance is going to be the motor, I can do constraint that enabled equal to not bool. Again, because if I enable the ball sockets, I want to disable the motors. So if this code, if I do a playtest now, my character is going to fall and basically float. So I also need to do humanoid.platform stand and then set it to boolean. And now it's going to work properly. So here I'm just going to do task wait 5 seconds and then set the ragdoll of the character to be false. So now I have fallen onto the ground and now my character is back up again. So that's the basic system and now also to have different settings for different body types I actually need to make a table. 
and this table is going to be called a settings table, which is actually going to be a dictionary and not a normal table, where an index of this dictionary is going to be one of the motor names. For example, if I want to change the settings of the waste, I can do index waste is equal to and then another table and just copy all of this line of code right here and disable the ball socket part and then just separate everything with a comma and just start changing some of these values. So let's say I wanted to make this really stiff, I didn't want to enable the ragdoll on the waist, I would have settings like this. But if I wanted to change the settings of let's say the right shoulder, I would copy all of this and then just change these values again, like this. And when we are at it, I can also do the same for the left shoulder as well. And again, make sure that this index right here is going to be the name of the motor. If I wanted to change the value of the neck, let's say, from right here, this neck motor is going to be the same as the ball neck constraint that's connecting these two body parts. So by making a reference like this in the index of this dictionary, I can easily just access settings of the socket by giving it the same name as the motor 6D. So for the neck motor, it would again be another table with for example different settings. And while having this table, I can actually just comment out these lines and then just make another variable. And I'm going to call it current settings, which is going to be equal to then the settings table reference from an index of the motor that name. Then I can do if current settings then I can just copy all of this, paste it in and instead of having these values what I need to do is refer to the current settings followed by the dot notation and everything that's stored right here. So this is going to be the upper angle and everything else is going to be the twist lower angle, the twist upper angle and the max friction torque. And again if I do a playtest now, you can see that my character's head is behaving a bit differently, same with everything else. And the legs as you see, they don't have any settings in the settings table, so they are using the default ball socket constraints one. And if you wanted to make a default preset for the socket constraints, you could also do a default index, which is again going to be a table, that you can change the values right here, but I'm going to make everything stiff, because I want to do that if there isn't a part in the settings table, so if this value is going to be nil, I can do an or statement, and refer to the settings table from default. So with the default preset, the legs of my character should basically be stiff. And well, they actually are, but they are kind of in the ground. And that's basically everything in the script, and you can see how we can enable and disable it, but I'm actually just going to enable the ragdoll whenever the player dies. So I need a reference to the humanoid again, and then just do humanoid that died, and then just connect a function where I'm going to set the ragdoll of the character to true. And whenever I'm setting the ragdoll of this character after the death of the humanoid, in this case right here I don't need to check the humanoid right here again. So for this use case I can just comment out this line, because I know that the humanoid is going to exist, because I already do that check there. But just to have it more universal, I'm going to leave it like this. So if I do a playtest now, and just reset my character, you can see that it's basically in the ragdoll state. So yeah, again, this place is available on my Patreon, and you need to be at least the cut tier to unlock it. I'm also going to prepare more stuff later and actually get to managing my channel and Discord a little bit more, but I don't really have the time to do that now. But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today, so again, leave a like as well as support the channel, and thank you guys for watching, hope everyone had a nice day, and see ya!